This is the Entertainment Roundup for November 26, 2012. I'm J77. I hope everybody out there had a very wonderful Thanksgiving. I myself had a wonderful Thanksgiving. It's always wonderful to spend it with family members um, that you see frequently to those who you rarely see. Um, it's uh, always a good time to talk about the past as well as reminisce of what's going on with um, each other now. Um, also had a very moderate, quiet Saturday on Friday and Saturday. Um, got something on Black Friday, but I wasn't rushing to get it. I got it around 4 in the afternoon. Um, something I actually needed, and I needed it immediately, so I finally got it. Um, and in all, I also kept the tabs of what's going on in the uh, world of news, entertainment news. And um, five stories, which I have right here in front of me. Um, I caught my attention. Um, a couple of um, good charities, um, a successful surgery, um, a lawsuit, and unfortunately two sad um, stories, one more tragic than the other one. And I'm going to start off with the one uh, that caught my attention very, very quickly. I have followed this. I haven't done any videos on it. I wanted to wait a, a while um, and do it as an entertainment roundup um, um, topic rather than just a single topic. Uh, but, uh, no matter how you put it, it's a sad, sad day for boxing. Um, sad, sad day for a lot of his a lot of fans and his family members. And it leaves, um, the question of whether the police will be able to apprehend the people responsible for this. I'm referring to former champion Hector Macho Camacho. As you guys know, he died on Saturday in the hospital of Puerto Rico, where he has been unconscious since he was shot in the face <clears throat> in an attack in his hometown. Camacho went into cardiac arrest uh, on the pre-dawn hours and he was taken off on life support uh, and died shortly thereafter. Um, this was also, this was given by consent from the mother on Friday night. Um, she has supported removing him from life support after uh, his three sons had arrived from the US mainland and had a chance to see their father for the last time. Uh, they managed to visit him before he died, said the former pro boxer and a friend of his, I believe is Victor L. Colley Jess. I, I hope I'm saying his name right. I, I have said it wrong. I do apologize. I'm um, a longtime friend of his. Um, his mother had made um, a statement uh, on Friday night, uh, which is uh, pretty much, it, it's sad, it, uh, but... You understand where she's coming from, but it's still very, very sad. Um, and she said in the statement, I lost my son three days ago. He's alive only because of machines. My son is not alive. My son is only alive for the people who love them. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people who love them, who was devastated by his loss, uh, and will always keep him in his heart. So I'm in New York. I have seen a shrine dedicated to his honor. People, um, people writing his name in their cars. While I was standing on 14th Street wait, uh, waiting for the light to change, I saw a beautiful car. Uh, and the front of um, his hood, the very front of his hood, there was a picture of Hector Macho Camacho framed, um, beautifully done, um, that went, went past me. Um, that's how much uh, an impact Hector Macho Camacho have done, especially in Harlem. Um, and this is how much it devastated the community, Spanish community especially, uh, from its passing. Um, in the article, it goes on to uh, to pretty much say that uh, that uh, pretty much the Hector's career, he has won 79 um, wins, lost six, and has three um, um, no decisions. Uh, he had knocked out Leonard in 1997, ending the former champ's final comeback attempt. He had faces um, for popular names like Felix Trinidad, Julio uh, Cesar Chavez, and Sugar Ray Leonard. These um, wins was also clouded by the battle of drug, alcohol, and other problems throughout his life. Um, he also had a sentence to seven years in 2007. Uh, in, f in prison for burglary charges, but the judge eventually suspended all but one year of the sentence and gave Camacho a pro um, probation. He would then s he will wind up serving two weeks in jail after violating probation. His wife, he had a domestic problem which uh, ended 
um, in his uh, in their divorce. The reason why I'm bringing this up because the um, San Juan Police Department had found uh, in his friend who was also attacked and killed uh, in the attack in the drive-by attack um, some um, small amounts of um, cocaine and other cocaine bags that was not open. Um, this um, raised the question of whether that played a very strong role in what has happened to him or was it just coincidental. Now, I talked to my sister about this. Uh, we had a nice um, chat about it. I asked her what she feel about it because my sister is Puerto Rican. And uh, she uh, basically said that, you know, he had lived a very, um, very wild lifestyle. But even with that being said, um, no one deserved the fate that he does. No one. Not even her worst enemy. He, she wouldn't wish that on. And I, and I agree with her. This was an inexcusable um, disregard for another person's life. And the fact um, that uh, the police have made no progress... It really bothers me. Now, according to them, they have very few witnesses, which leave a lot of people believing that um, they may, they have, no one has the witnesses, or people who have witnesses just simply refuse to step up and talk about it. Um, but one thing is certain, um, it, it, very, it leaves a very dark hole uh, in that community that um, unless someone steps up and says something, it's, it's it doesn't vote well for, for that community. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because of uh, the recent violence that has sparked um, last year. Um, Hector Camacho Jr. Um, has said that violence has gripped Puerto Rico um, uh, and people reported a record of 1,117 homicides last year. That is unbelievable. Death, jail, drugs, killing, he said. That's what's um, that's what the streets are now. Uh, this is that's amazing. And um, I asked my sister again, "Is this is true?" And she said, yeah, "Pretty much. It's it's it's, it's uh, pretty much out there." And that, that's a scary thought uh, to know that that's actually continue happening, and the police are pretty much paralyzed to not really do anything. Um, and this is a lot to another conversation with a friend of mine that Camacho came back to Puerto Rico to help the community, give back to the community. Um, and the fact that the community either is unaware of what truly really happened, not, doesn't know who did it or simply know who did it, but refuse to say anything, it, it just it just shakes my head. Uh, it really does. According to the article, they said the Camacho sisters have said they would like to fly Camacho's body back in New York and bury him him there. Camacho grew up mostly in Harlem, earning the nickname Harlem Hector. Um, that's pretty much it. I'll leave a link below so you guys can check it out yourself. You guys can make your own conclusion on this. Um, but uh, again, um, the boxing world was a great fighter. They lost uh, a, a, uh, a great athlete. Um, New York, I know for a fact, especially for me living here, is sh um, shaken, shocked, upset, angry. At what has happened, and you can only hope that uh, the San Juan Police Department will find whoever did this and put this guy to, and um, justice can finally be served. Um, that's pretty much the only thing that I think I think people will actually want to see happen. All right, moving on to from one sad story to another. I might as well keep going. Um, I was never a big JR fan. My mom was. Uh, my mom loved JR. I mean, there's no question. Uh, she watched pretty much any episode that was there, uh, that was on the, <laughs> that was on at, at that time. She watched that Dynasty. I don't know what it was about primetime so so I don't know what, what it was about primetime um, shows in general, but she loved them. She watched them. And she pretty much idolized them. Um, and she also watched Dallas and liked the JR, even though when I saw him, I thought he was uh, a slime ball. <laughs> That's the best way I can say it. But that's what made him so good. Um, and Larry um, Hogman, he pretty much uh, he pretty much perfected that character. 
Um, no one else is going to um, going, going to replace him. And I don't know what Dallas is going to do. I know they said they actually gave him a send-off. Um, I have not yet uh, seen it, so I, I don't know. Uh, but I hope they do do um, give him just um, justice and actually give him the, you know, the proper set off. If anybody's seen it, um, um, please let me know what they did because I have missed it and I don't got TNA, so uh, TNT actually, so I can't really tell you who exactly. But if I do catch it, probably on YouTube or something, I'll definitely take a look at it. Uh, but as you know, Jr. A, was a businessman, chief, faithful husband, a bottomless well of corruption, yet. With the sparkling grin, Larry Hogman masterfully created a uh, a charmingly loathsome oil baron and a coke full of Texas-sized uh, jester for ratings. On television, long-time running, successful nighttime soap, Dallas. Although the first grin framed as a nice guy, uh, Major Tony Nelson in the 50 in the film in the 1965-70 comedy I Dream of Jeannie um, and that's where I remember him at I almost forgot he actually was uh, the major Nelson that, that, uh, from from that show but that's just go to show how he was totally unrecognizable uh, from Dallas uh, it's uh, Jeannie uh, the greatest um, stardom with JR his stardom really came from JR the CBS serial drama about um, the Hewing family and those in their orbit airs, airs from April 1978 to May 1991. Broke viewers records with its Who Shot JR, a 1980s cliffhanger that left unclear if Herman's character was dead. Yeah, that was a big thing. It, that I will admit, that was... A very big thing. I think every mother in the neighborhood, because I believe I was what, I believe it was eight, nine, at the time, 35. Um, I believe no, I was actually 12, 13. I was actually up there, but everybody was talking about. It. I said, who cares? I mean, they who shot jail, but it was a very big thing. That's how big uh, that was. The actor would return as jail in the new edition of Dallas this year, had a long history of health problems, and died Friday due to complications from his battle with cancer, his family said. Larry was back in his beloved hometown of Dallas, uh, reigniting the iconic role he loved the most. Larry family and closest friends have joined him in the Dallas for the Thanksgiving holidays, and the family said in a statement that uh, was provided uh, to the so Associated Press by Warner Brothers producers of the show. The 81-year-old actor was surrounded by friends and family before he passed peacefully, just as he wished for, the statement said. <laughs> and that's pretty much going to be um, going into it. But yeah, my memory of JR wasn't with Dallas. My mom watched Dallas. Uh, my mom loved Dallas along with other other shows. Um, I didn't start getting to soaps until probably the late um, 80s when um, I got hooked on Adam Chandler's um, schemes and you know Haley um, Vaughn and you know Trevor Dillon and Natalie Portman and Natalie uh, I believe that's her name Natalie Portman. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, so fan, so uh, I'm just letting you know, I was really got into all my children, got into a little bit of uh, One Like to Live, but most of the time, it was very, very late, I was in my teens, and I had a VCR recorded that, I never really got into Dallas, I liked the song, I didn't really grab hold of what um, Dallas was, but love IG and Regini, I really did, never saw the um, the reunion show, if you want to call it that, but I always love I Dream of Genie, and I always love his portrayal on that show. And again, I didn't know that one or two were the same because I didn't follow Dallas. But I, I once I saw his face, and once I saw his other pictures, I said, "Yeah, that's the guy from um, I Dream of Genie." Um, so I have good memories, and I actually did enjoy um, that show a lot. I really, really did. Um, granted, it was reruns that I was watching it, but. Um, to me, they were still new because when I was watching, I was like watching every last episode, including when they finally got married. And it was like about time, man. You know you love it. It's married. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Uh, but, uh, yeah, JR's passing is, uh, 
Hong Kong jail is a is a big uh, is it was is a big big loss, and again I didn't in terms of my feeling of the new Dallas show, like I said I I am I never really I was surprised that he was actually went back to to that role I really did, uh, but apparently he loved it enough to re, to um, to reprise it. Um, Dallas, uh, the new Dallas. I heard mixed feelings on it, but uh, I, I, it's like I said. I have to see it for myself to actually give it a full judge. I will say this though: um, he does leave his mark in in television. He really does. Um, he does leave. He le he leaves behind something that can never be replaced. And again, for what it's worth, um, I like to Major T Tony T. Nelson. Tony Nelson. Um, doing a genie. A lot of people will remember him for that. Many people are going to remember him from um, the nighttime soap Dallas. He leaves a legacy behind that will never be replaced. And like always, my my um, condolences go out to him, his families, and his friends. Uh, I don't know what uh, the people who are producing is going to do. Honestly, I don't. Um, they haven't really said much, but they did a lot of um, documentary. A lot of people came forward and spoke about him said nothing but great things to him. Um, there was even um, Bobby Eaton have actually um, have done something. So a lot of people have come forward, a lot come out and did their little things. And I think that's pretty much all, all you need to have. Um, if the studios choose to do something beyond that, that would be great. Um, if not, I think his friends and his family, along with other colleagues um, and other news reports, have done um, done him justice in terms of keeping his memory alive. Um, so, you know, rest in peace, old friend. I hope, um, and, you know, again, my condolences is out to you, to, to um, his family, as well as love, other, other loved ones. Okay, guys, so I got three more stories to go. I want to start with this story, and then I've had to the other two stories that are actually good news. I want to get this one out the way, because I'm a little bit surprised by this one. Well, I shouldn't be surprised by it because this is not the first time this game show has this kind of situation going on to it. But according to this report that is done by the Associated Press Los Angeles, the producers of The Price is Right um, owe a former model on the show more than $7.7 .7 million in pivotal damage for discriminating against her after a pregnancy. The jury determined Wednesday that the, ju um, the juror came on the, germ the judgment came one day after the panel determined the game show producers discriminated against, uh, I believe her name is Branda Cardrain, I believe. They awarded her nearly seven, seven, this ain't seven million dollars, so I'm, I don't know why they said seven point seven million dollars. They awarded her nearly seven hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars. It's a far-fetched cry from seven point seven million, I'm just saying. And, and um, actual damages. The 41-year-old said that she was rejected when she tried to return to work in the early 2000s after taking a mandatory a maternity leave, and the judge agreed and uh, that, dis that determined that uh, believe that the uh, Formatel Media North America and the Price of Right producers owe her more than 8.5 million dollars in all. Okay. Obviously, there there's more to it than what, I, what I'm reading. I'm humbled and shocked, Crane said, after the jury announced its verdict. I'm happy that the justice was served today, not only for women in the entertainment industry, but women in the workplace. The uh, media said, uh, the form, um, I believe, Fremantle Media said it is standing by its previous statement, which said uh, it expected to be fully vindicated after the appeal. We believe the verdict in this case was a result of flawed process in which the court, amongst other things, refused to allow the jury to hear and considered that 40% of our model had been pregnant and further important evidence um, from a media set. In the defense, producers said that they were satisfied with the five models working in the show at the time. Uh, Time Corin sought the woman Corin, the, the person who had sued Corin, sought to return. Seven other um, former models have sued the series, and a and his longtime host Bob Barker, which um, we'll get to in that um, again, who retired in 2007. Most of the case involving Bob Barker's beauty 
the nickname given um, the gown wearing woman who presented prizes to contestants ended without a court settlement. Comedian actor Drew Carey followed Bar Bark in the show as uh, as the new show host. Now, again, I remember the Bar Barker situation. Uh, it was a very serious situation, um, a sex scandal, uh, if I may call. And it was um, a lot of things. Also, even people said that this may be the end of practice right after we know it. Of course, that finally died down. The woman was no longer there. Um, there was new models, but uh, it didn't bong down the show. Uh, Bob Barker stayed on for many years later. He finally retired. Uh, and we now have Drew Carey, which I have not seen how Drew Carey is. Um, it's not that I hate the guy, just um, I have no reason to see on um, the Price is Right anymore. It's just uh, it, it grew out of me uh, a little bit. Uh, so that's it. Um, in terms of what this going on here, uh, it doesn't really explain. But here's the thing they're saying that they are um, they being unfairly mistreated because they were not allowed to uh, show that um, other models have been pregnant and they have been coming back. Okay, fine. I, I think that they do have a legitimate case on that part. But what the thing you don't hear from this article is, why did they let the other one go? What was about her that they felt uh, there was no need to have her anymore? See, that's the thing that um, they're not explaining. They're, sure, you may have other models that was there that was pregnant uh, that you allowed them to come back after you know they took care of business. But... It doesn't really, again, you're not explaining why, out of all them, why she was the one that um, that you flat out refused. Um, and that's the thing I don't think they have actually have done. I think they're trying to throw that, well, we don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, we have models that has went on, um, on leave, um, and we walk them back with open arms. That may be true, but they also must take that uh, to the count that they may have known their rights more than this woman does. And um, that's what they probably came on, especially where she doesn't really know her rights. Let's get rid of her, knowing that she probably does know her rights, and that's pretty much left you guys in a big run. So, again, there's a whole lot of stories, a whole lot of um, questions in this media uh, or this media production um, has not answered. Um, and that is, why did you let her go? Um, you have to give a reason why you let it go, and I think no matter if they, they do appeal it, uh, which they can, and they, and it can actually flip back to their favor, they still have to say why they let her go, and that's something I don't think they have done. Um, have they done that, probably they wouldn't be owing so much money, but here's another thing about it, that this is, their past is going to come back to haunt them, because again, during the Bob Barker era, they had, um, they had this kind of problem before, uh, Mostly on Bob Barker's um, part than anything else, so it it definitely sounds like there's uh there's a lot that the that this organiz that Price is Right at company is just not saying. Again, then they explain they're saying that they have a problem with that with uh, with someone um taking maternity leaves to do what they gotta do, but they really haven't explained why this woman out of all of them was let go, and I think that was the main thing. I think that's one of the things that I think the juror. If anything, the jury, if anything, is going to be looking at it and says they didn't explain it, they're going to say, well, you definitely discriminate because you can't really explain why you let it go. Um, who knows? Uh, maybe it gets explained um, when they do the appeal. Maybe they actually could uh, come up with a better answer. I hope they can come up with a better answer. Um, because even if they show the, the evidence saying that um, they have, you know, not discriminated against um, pregnant women before, you're still going to give an explanation to why you let um, this one go after knowing she was expecting to have a child soon. You guys may disagree, of course. I'd like to hear your opinion on the matter. Um, I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, and uh, with that being said, I'll move on to the next one. Um, singer B. Jorks, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, had had successful uh, vocal cord surgery um, this week, last week. Um, the Iceland singer B. Jork says that she had successful surgery to remove a vocal cord, a polypene, polypene, I think that's what they call it. The eccentric 47-year-old singer said her 
official website that she had. Tr she was trying to tackle the problem with uh, exercise, diet, since doctor first discovered the, I'm, I'm just going to spell it, P-O-L-Y-P. I hope that I'm, sa I'm saying Powell Peep, um, hopefully I'm saying it right. Uh, it's a growth on our, on a, on either one of her or both of her vocal cords uh, several years ago. B. Jork said that she decided to undergo laser surgery and it has worked. So she has to stay quiet for three weeks. Hmm. She wrote Surgery Rocks. It has been a very successful, it's been very satisfying to sing all of them, all those clear notes again. Um, the singer apologized for canceling versus shows early this year and that she looks forward to singing for her fans next year. Last year, Adele had a minor surgery to remove uh, to remove a something similar, the same growth that she had. She had the, but it was more minor. Hmm. Well, I, I'm glad that she had the successful surgery. It definitely sounds like that's one of those things that's common with vocal singers. Um, again, I, this is the first time I'm hearing this type of thing. I'm actually going to be looking this up because it's actually kind of curious what this actually does and what effects it can have if it continues. Um, B. Jerk, I, re I remember her pretty much uh, from the movie. Um, uh, she was in a very independent film. A very, very scary, weird independent film, but I'm amused that singing was... Excellent. Uh, I got that soundtrack. I've seen it all. Um, why can't I remember this movie's name? I don't know. Um, but uh, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a movie that is um, pretty much good. It's a quiet taste film. It's not everybody, everybody's going to like it. But um, it was one of her, I believe, second and probably last one because I think that um, she didn't realize just how hard work um, acting really was. But she continues singing. Um, she actually sung um, You Only Live Twice, a um, Shaken Not Stirred um, that was done by David Arnold. Like that song, also got it also uh, for my iTunes. Um, she had a few problems, of course. Uh, there was an incident where she uh, attacked, I think, a reporter um, a long time ago. Um, she, just had, she was just basically burnt out. But overall, she continues to sing, continues to wow a lot of people. Uh, she's very boisterous in her own views, her own political views. Uh, but an overall, very good sing uh, singer. Um, if you get a chance, just um, check, um, look for my music up on YouTube uh, or um, on iTunes. Um, you'd be surprised how good she really is. I, I, I really recommend you listen to her voice. She has a unique voice. There's no question about that. And I'm very happy that she has successful surgery. Um, not speaking for three weeks, uh, that's uh, something I... Wow, um, that's uh, that's a meditation for you, man. That's that's because I had to do that. That's not easy. It is not easy at all. Um, that takes a lot of discipline. But um, hopefully that she can go through it. Hopefully she can go back and doing what she does best. It does look like she's looking forward to singing again. Um, and I'm looking forward to see what she um, what she has in store for the upcoming um, year. So you know, get well soon. Last but not least, this is the minor one, another minor story that I felt the need to share. Um, and this is something to do with Mark Anthony. Singer Mark Anthony is coming to the aid of orphans in some Dominican Republic. Uh, this was Santo, Santo uh, Domingo, I think, believe. Um, I know people won't kill me with these names. Santo Domingo. There we go. Santo Domingo. <laughs> I will get it. Don't worry. Um, the fundraise, the foundation run by Anthony with music and sports production, Henry um, Cardas, planned to build a new residence, hall, classroom, and a baseball field for the children of Christ Orphanage uh, in the essential part of La Roma. I believe I'm saying that right. Anthony attended the groundbreaking ceremony Friday with his model girlfriend, Shanna de Lama. Children of the Christ Foundation director Sonia Han said that Anthony visited the orphanage previously and decided to help. His Material Care Foundation raises $200,000 for the 
for the extension of the land on donated uh, by the sugar company. The orphanage was founded in 1996 for children who was abused and abandoned um, or whose parents were unable to care for them. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, I will leave a link to that one. Um, but hey, um, my hat tips off to uh, Mark Anthony. That's a very good, um, good gesture, a very good um, cause, um, and that's um, something I, I just simply have. I know it's not much. This the article didn't uh, cover too much on it. It's actually only two paragraphs, uh, but it's something. But it's uh, something that I felt I need to share uh, with uh, people and. Um, if I have, if I can, um, I will also look up. I know there's a link to this article. Um, if you guys go on, when you guys go on link into this one, there's another link um, to the foundation that he works with. If you want information about that, uh, by all means, go right ahead. Uh, but um, neither to say, um, these are the kind of stuff I like to talk about more so than anything else because um, there are people out there, there are good um, people out there who are willing to give back in any which way they possibly could. So hats off to Mark Anthony for doing that. Um, hats off to the foundation he's associated with. Um, hats off to the, even the sugar company um, who donated the land. Um, so um, everybody gets my props, my uh, my respect for that. I will leave a link below to the article so you can read it. There's also a link between uh, the Mattress Care Foundation. There's the one who um, do help finance the thing. So you guys could take a look at it. Um, if you guys want more information, um, I will leave a link to that as well. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, this is all I have to say for the, for the time being. Um, as always, if you guys have uh, your own opinions on the stories I have, by all means, uh, put it in the comment section. I'd like to hear your opinion on that. But for now, this is J77 saying take care, be safe. I will talk to you soon.